Today we'll be asking a question, why do electric cars cost more than traditional ICE vehicles? Really last week, Robert released a vehicle on the new Vauxhall Corsa E, the new electric vehicle from Corsa, and halfway through the video, he made a comment that, you know, how expensive the Vauxhall Corsa was in relation to its ICE competitors, and how it electric vehicles in general tend to be a lot more expensive and he, he theorizes there's a conspiracy that manufacturers do this deliberately so they don't sell you electric vehicles and they'd rather sell you petrol and ice vehicles now yes that's kind of true but unlike the way robert tried to make out which was they're doing it for some you know unknown reason there is actual reasons why electric vehicles cost more than ice vehicles and no it's not because the batteries are more expensive however that is a small factor one of the major factors that makes cars more expensive is all down to r&d that's research and development now ice vehicles petrol cars diesel cars They've been made for years and years and years, decades. They're really old tech. And even when they come out with a new engine that's more economical, really it's just an old engine with some little bit of R&D that they've spent trying to make it a little bit more economical. But in the grand scheme of things, to make a petrol engine, a new turbo, a new supercharger, the money in that R&D is relatively old tech. It's really inexpensive for them to make a new engine from a current engine and just change the design. EVs are new. They are really new in terms of research and development money. To make a new motor, a new high voltage system, to make a new battery for an electric car, they have to pour in lots of research and development money. Now, think of it as a massive time scale. If EVs, let's, let's just pretend ICE cars have only been around for say 100 years, that research development money is very evenly spent over 100 years and therefore the cost of reclaiming that R&D money is pretty much been soaked up. The cars before have already paid for that research and development and this is just the way businesses work. Now electric vehicles have only been around for a very short period of time so we are still paying for that research and development over such a sm small time period. It really, Tesla's for example, the Roadster's only been around for 10 years and we're still paying for that research and development from those cars because they're so new. And the only way EVs are gonna get cheaper is the longer they're out, the more they make, and the more they make, that research and development cost shrinks. Now there is some other factors that do keep high prices of electric vehicles. Building the cars also costs more money. Now, this is a roundabout answer, and I'll explain why. Yes, once the factory is producing cars, for example, Tesla can build electric cars cheaper because the factory is built purely for making electric cars. Now, if you're an ICE manufacturer, you can't just suddenly switch off your ICE building vehicles and go straight to electric because people still want to buy ICE vehicles and they're still selling them and the research and development money, as we just mentioned in the previous point, is already paid for. So they make more money out of those cars building them because there's no R&D cost to recoup and the factories are there. So they're not going to suddenly stop building ICE vehicles. What they have to do is retool factories that they already have building ICE vehicles. Now, retooling a factory costs a great amount of money for two reasons. One, to retool a factory, you usually need to shut down its production line, which means you're losing money on not making the ICE vehicles that you are still selling, and you have to retool for these electric vehicles. And retooling comes with other various issues. It's, do you retool purely for electric? In which case, great, you know, you retool the whole line purely for electric and you can build very cheap electric cars, or do you retool to do electric and petrol cars? In which case, you've probably got other factors that are gonna cause issues there. Or, do you build a whole new factory that's ones just specifically for electric vehicles. Now these are a lot of considerations and planning, and again, these planning costs, working out what the company wants to do and direction, costs more money, and they need to decide which direction they are going in. Okay, so you've decided to build the factory line, you've retooled all the factory, that's it, right? That's all the costs. No, now you've got to retrain 
all the staff on that production line to either purely work on electric vehicles or work on both. Now, if you've made the production line for both, you're gonna to have to retrain and reskill all those staff to deal with both manufacturing of both cars. Now, that means, again, you're gonna to have to retrain them all. This is costing downtime again to retrain the staff. They're gonna get things wrong for the first couple of weeks. So you're gonna have quality issues on the electric vehicles because they're gonna to have to go wrap around for quality checks because the staff have been retrained to do two things and they'll take a while to adjust. So again, more complications, more delays, more costs. And all these things now are adding up. You can see why electric vehicles are costing more money because if you look at all the previous steps, everything every step is getting more and more expensive they're adding more cost and this cost again is squeezed in this very short time frame and as obviously as this time frame gets longer like i've just mentioned it's going to get cheaper and cheaper but there is another major fact what makes them more expensive and that is basically evs are less profitable they're more reliable and that short term has a great effect for manufacturers it means that in the first three years of warranty they don't go wrong but they also know as they get older there is less repair work for them to do there is less moving parts to go wrong there are less faults there's less bits they can sell you when the car goes wrong in the future and that's just one of the issues so you know there's my engines go wrong, head gaskets go wrong, but not, they're just one issue that manufacturers make money out of. They, they make money out of selling and repairing these parts. The major issue for them is servicing. Servicing is a huge issue for manufacturers because they can't sell you oil filters. They can't sell you pollen filters, uh, but they can still sell you pollen filters, but they can't sell you air and fuel filters and all these extra bits and bobs for servicing makes them money and the reason why they also make money out of this is they a lot of main dealers are franchise models and franchises take this risk on of taking a franchise and paying all this money to have a franchise dealership is because they know they're going to make money out of the servicing model and if they're not making money out of the servicing model franchises are going to have to get cheaper for, for, for companies because they're not going to make the return in investment on these things so manufacturers having to balance that with franchise cost and delivery cost and they're trying to find a solution of where they need to price the car and until they get that right we're not really going to have fair prices for EVs because they, they need to bridge this gap and they don't know what the future gap of this is going to be yet because EVs are too new. Now you are part of the problem for a reason electric cars are more expensive and if you're thinking of buying an electric car or you own an electric car then you are one of the root causes for them being more expensive and this is because of demand and supply. If you're a car manufacturer and you can sell 20 EVs a week and produce 20 EVs a week and you can sell them for £30,000, are you going to reduce the price of them? No, you'd be bonkers, why would you do that? You'd increase the, the production a little bit and you're still selling them out so then you increase the price a little bit and you're still selling them out and you just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing now this has been shown over and over again with loads of manufacturers they, they'll increase supply the demand for them drops because they can meet all the demand and then they lower the price so the Kia e Nero, for example, waiting list was 18 months. They increased supply, and now you can get one in about two months. So manufacturers will adjust the price as they see demand slump, and obviously they have lots of supply. And this is what we need to bear with, as manufacturers like uh, Vauxhall ramp up their EV production, there's gonna be a moment where they are overly priced, and eventually, the production will hit because the researching and development is, is starting to drop and we'll see a dip in price now weirdly the opposite is true of my favorite band renault renault was selling the renault zoe battery owned for about twenty thousand pound on the ze40 and now the new model comes out and it's 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 a big increase um, for a similar spec you're paying almost £27,000 for the same car. Now, is there £7,000 worth of improvements? No, not really. Has it got a bigger battery? Yes. Is it worth seven grand? No. 
it's, it's, they know they, the Zoe was underpriced. When they were selling the Zoe at 20 grand battery owned, it was underpriced. And I know it was underpriced because they could sell every single unit they made and people were buying them secondhand for exactly what dealers were selling, selling them for new. Uh, you could buy a Renault Zoe brand new for 20 grand and someone was selling one used a year old for 20 grand. And that just tells Renault that they underpriced the vehicle. So they put the price up and that's what they do. That's what manufacturers do. They are there to make profit. That manufacturers deeply do not care about the environment. They care about the company's bottom line. So yes, electric cars should be cheaper. Yes, we are facing a climate emergency. The world is in trouble. But these are businesses and CEOs care about their job for the next 10 years. They don't care about their predecessor job in the, you know, their future jobs in 20, 30, 50 years. And we need to get more manufacturers building them and prices will drop. And I've criticized Tesla for having poor quality because they're trying to meet high demand. And it's either quality or or, or higher prices so you need to make a choice and that's what manufacturers are doing they're building high quality vehicles but they're charging slightly more for them and Tesla are trying to build them as cheap as possible and they're letting the quality slip a bit so it's a balancing act and eventually we will see some price parity so I hope you've enjoyed this video please go and give it a like check out my other videos check out my patreon page if you want to support my channel grow if you've not seen my channel before I make videos about electric vehicles every single week and there's lots of advice and guide on my channel for free. Thank you very much and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.